Sit right back and you'll hear a tale. A tale of a long, long trip. Made by a bunch of chickens. No, not cowards. Poultry. <laughs> Striking out into the world to make a name for themselves and founding their own village, aptly named The Coop. But The Coop is surrounded by naysayers. Predators eager to crack some eggs and make some omelets. You gonna let them do that to you? Oh yeah, you're the chickens in this scenario. And it's time to put those cynics in their place. Survive a whole year in the coop and prove them all wrong. Can you do it? Why not? And I'm going to teach you how by showing you how to play Flock Together. Flock Together is a cooperative game where all the players are chickens, working together to defeat the invading predators. If you can do that before the end of the third season, you win. But if the third season ends and you haven't defeated all the predators, you lose. Or if any player is dead when the final predator is defeated, you lose. Or if at any point all the players die, you lose. But that's not going to happen to you. To set up the game, place the game board in the center of the table. This area is the coop and is an inside area. Outside the coop are four outside areas, the grit stones, the hindred acre wood, the golden gables, and the badlands. My board is a prototype, but these areas will all be labeled in your copy. Predators live in the outside areas and go in these spots on the board. Shuffle the predator books and randomly select three, placing them in the areas marked by these eyes. When you place the predator, open its book to the first page. Place a health counter by each predator. These are prototype and are a bit bigger than yours will be. The health of each predator is the number of players multiplied by the number shown in the heart. So, in a three-player game, Hims Gruber would have six health, Ursula Bone would have nine, and Salmonella would have six. To choose your final boss predator, you'll randomly select one more predator book and place it in this final area, keeping the book closed. You won't find out who you're facing until you've defeated all the other predators. You won't just be fighting predators though, you've also got these pesky grubs to contend with. Now fighting them is optional, but they can give you some handy perks. These are the grub cards. Shuffle them and separate them into two equal decks. Place one face up here, outside the coop, and one face up here, inside the coop. Whenever you discard a card from either deck, you can place that card here. This is your round tracker. Place the weather vane token here on day one. Each round is a single day and each season is seven days or rounds. Each season has its own weather deck. Shuffle each one separately and place them below the board. Draw a card from the spring deck and place it face up here. This is the first weather condition you'll face. These are bonus cards. These are one-time use special powers. They go here on the board and you can discard them here. Place all your resources nearby, heart tokens for health tracking, eggs, food, and dice. The dice are little chickens and the side with the face is a six. Finally, everyone needs a player board and to take on their poultry persona. <laughs> take two random chicken books and choose which one you'd like to be. Open your book to the first page showing a baby chick. Place it on your player board here. This shows what you earn during each production phase. And this chicken fist shows your attack strength. We'll talk more about both of these later. This highlighted area with the chick symbol shows you any special abilities or bonuses you start the game with. You won't have access to these until you level up. This symbol shows you how many meals you need to eat to grow to your next level. And the number inside this heart is your starting health. Take that number of heart tokens and place them face up on your health track. Take an extra action token and place it here, fire side up. This is where you'll keep any food tokens you gain during the game. Each one is worth one food no matter what the token looks like. This is where you'll keep any eggs you gather during the game. This is where you'll keep track of how many meals you've eaten during the game. When you eat your first meal, you'll take one food token from your reservoir and place it on the track. For each additional meal, just move this token up the track. Finally, choose a cheeple in whatever color speaks to you like poultry in motion. Then fly that cheeple on over to inside the coop. Now, 
Which one of you ate chicken most recently? Give the first player token to the person on your left. You go last. Now you're ready for the first day of spring. Flock Together takes place over three seasons, spring, summer, and fall, and each season is seven days long. Each day represents a single round of the game. Every player will take their turn, then you'll discard one grub card from either the inside or outside deck. Then you move the weather vane token to the next day and do it all over again. Whenever the weather vane reaches this symbol, which happens before days one, three, and six, you can exchange any number of eggs you have for an equal number of food tokens. You'll also experience a change in weather. Draw a new weather card from that season's deck to replace the old weather card. This phase of weather will last until the next egg exchange and weather draw. When you get to the end of the seventh day, the weather vane goes back to the day one spot and you move on to the next season triggering an egg exchange and drawing a new weather card from that season's deck. Any predator still alive will level up at the start of a new season, and we'll go into more detail on how that works in just a bit. Each day, you'll take a turn, and your turn is made up of two parts. The first part is production. Check this area of your chicken book to see what you gain during production. As a chick, you gain one food during production. When you grow, you'll instead roll a die to see if you lay an egg during production. After production, you'll take two actions. You can take the same action twice or take two different actions. If you want to play a bonus card or use the ability from your grub card, you can do that as a free action at any time, even on another player's turn. Once per season, you can use your extra action token to take a third action on your turn. Flip it face down to show you've used it. When a new season starts, refresh the token by flipping it face up again. There are eight different actions to choose from, depending on the location your cheeple is at. Three actions can be done at any location. They are move, draw a card, and attack. The move action lets you move your cheeple between any two locations. You can go from inside the coop to outside, outside the coop to inside, or from one outside location to any other outside location. The draw a card action lets you take one card from the bonus card deck. Don't sleep on this action, these cards just might be the key to your victory. You can play a bonus card anytime, including immediately when you draw it. However, you can only ever have two bonus cards at once. If you draw a card and already have two, you must discard or immediately play one of them to be able to keep the new card. The attack action can happen in any location as long as you are in the same location as the enemy you are attacking. The only exception to this is the outside grub, which can be attacked from any outside location. Your attack strength is the number of chicken fists showing on your chicken book. To deal damage, spend one food per strength of your attack to do that much damage. For example, if you have one chicken fist, you may spend one food to deal one damage to an enemy. If you have three chicken fists, you may spend up to three food in a single attack action to deal up to three damage. When attacking a grub, deal your damage to them by placing your spent food tokens on the card. The number in this heart symbol is the amount of damage it will take to defeat them. Then apply their enemy effect, which is found here under their name. This effect might happen automatically, like the one on the ladybug, or it might show this symbol. If it does, roll the die to see if the effect happens. For example, if you roll a one when attacking the firefly, your attack misses. You forfeit the food you spent and don't deal any of your damage from this attack. When you defeat the grub by dealing damage equal to its health, you still suffer the enemy effects. They aren't going down without a fight. Then the player who dealt the final blow gains the grub card and now has access to the bonus at the bottom of the card. This bonus can be played anytime as a free action and there is no hand limit for grub cards. Remember, you're going to be discarding one grub card from either location at the end of each day and you can choose to discard one that has been dealt damage. If both decks ever run out, Shuffle the discard pile and divide it evenly between the inside and outside grub deck locations. Now let's focus on those predators. You can't win the game if you don't defeat them. 
On their card, you'll see their max health, which is, again, the number of players multiplied by the number shown. Here, you'll see their name and the amount of damage they deal in their return attack. One damage per claw. Underneath that is their unique predator effect. Just like with grubs, this symbol means you roll a die to see if the effect happens. When attacking a predator, you'll track their health with the predator damage counters. Deal damage equal to your attack strength. Don't forget to spend one food token for each point of damage you deal in your attack action. Then make sure you've applied any applicable predator effect and take damage equal to the predator's return attack. Again, just like with grubs, they will still do their return attack damage if you defeat them. They want to take you down with them. Here's a hot tip for hot chicks. If you know going into a fight that the predator's return attack damage will kill you, you probably want to wait to attack them until you're stronger. That being said, any predator still alive at the end of a season will level up, so don't wait too long to start attacking. When a predator levels up, flip to the next page in their book. This will show their improved effect and max health, which just might have gone up. Check their heart symbol and multiply the number of players by the number shown. Subtract from that any damage you've already dealt them. That's their new health. When we level up Hens Gruber in a three-player game, his max health becomes nine, three players times three. But we'd already done two damage to him, so Hens will start the new season with seven health. When you defeat a predator, you get loot to make you stronger. The player who dealt the final blow takes the predator book and flips it to the last page, now in possession of the special item listed there. Once you've defeated the last predator, you can reveal the final boss predator. Open the boss's predator book to its third page. You'll be fighting them at their final level. Then increase the health multiplier by three. So if Professor Multiarity is our final boss predator, we add three to the listed multiplier of four, making their health the number of players times seven. Phew, you're gonna need some help taking these predators down. And luckily we have some more actions you can do and they're gonna come in pretty handy. Wingy, handy. There are two actions you can take only when you're at an outside location. The first one is forage. When you forage, you gain one food token and place it in your food reservoir. The second outside only action you can take is eat. This is important because this is how your chicken grows. Remember, when you eat your first meal, you'll place the spent food token on your meal counter. For each other meal you eat, move that token up the track. When you're a chick, you can use one action to eat one meal. But as you level up, you'll be able to eat more meals per action. Once you've leveled up to cockerel or pullet, you'll be able to use one action to spend up to two food eating two meals. Spend a food token for each meal you eat and move up your meal counter track for each one. When your meal counter reaches the number listed here, you'll grow to your next level, a pullet or cockerel. Flip your chicken book to the next page and gain access to the new highlighted ability in addition to any previous abilities. You also add heart tokens to your health track to meet your new maximum health, shown here. Keep any face down heart tokens face down and place your new heart tokens face up. In the basket, you'll see the number you need to reach on the meal counter to grow to your final level, hen or rooster. When you do, flip the page again and gain access to your third and final ability and new health maximum. Also make note of your new attack strength and production as you grow. The last three actions to talk about can only be done inside the coop. While inside, you may lay an egg, heal, or brood. When you take the lay an egg action, collect one egg and place it in your egg reservoir. Chicks cannot lay eggs. They just hatched out of one. So you'll need to level up to be able to choose this action. When you take the heal action, you'll spend a food to flip a heart token face up. When you're a chick, you can only spend one food token to heal one heart. But as you level up to cockerel or pullet, you'll be able to use one action to spend up to two food, which would heal two hearts, one per food spent. And as a hen or rooster, you can use one action to spend up to three food, healing a heart for each one spent. If you ever take enough damage that your health is reduced to zero, your chicken is fried, parmesaned, cacciatoried. You're dead. 
You discard all your food tokens, eggs, bonus cards, and grub cards. You do, however, get to keep any loot drops you have. Then another player must be inside the coop and choose to take the brood action. They will pay one egg and then skip their next turn. The revived player randomly chooses a new chicken who joins the game at chick level, freshly hatched from the spent egg. The brood action should be treated as a last resort. If you plan your action strategically, you should be able to avoid taking so much damage that your health is reduced to zero. You can always see the strength of a predator's return attack after all. But some chickens are reckless and run around like their head's cut off. And then their head gets cut off. This took a dark turn. Speaking of turns, keep taking them. Production phase and two actions until you've defeated all four predators or until you've reached the end of the third season. If any predators are still alive or if any chickens are dead, your game ends in defeat. But I believe in you. You're going to survive this year most excellently. Just as long as you flock together.